What's going on guys? Welcome in. Today I'm going to show you how to get a trademark. Okay, get a trademark the cheapest, the easiest way. So whether you want to outsource this, I'm going to show you the best ways to do that. Or if you want to do it yourself with no lawyer at all, I'm going to show you step by step how to do this on my screen. That way you can go ahead and do this, save as much money as possible, get a trademark, whether you're doing Amazon, Shopify, or you have products in retail, whatever it may be, you can get your trademark, get that figured out without spending thousands and thousands of thousands of dollars doing this. Before we hop on my screen, I show you exactly how to do this. I just want to welcome you. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Cameron James. I've been selling Amazon for going on five years now. I've started over 50 plus private label products and gone through the trademark process many, many times before. Uh, if you guys like to stay up to date with anything e-commerce, anything private label related, anything branded related, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, I promise I will try not to disappoint you. Otherwise, guys, let's hop on my screen. I'm going to show you how to do this the easiest and cheapest way possible. All right, guys, so hop into my screen here. First, I'm just gonna give you an overlay of what we're gonna talk about, uh, what are all the methods we're gonna talk about, everything like that. So whether you're getting your uh, trademark for your private label brand for Amazon, Shopify, or whatever it may be, maybe you just wanna protect your brand name and you're not even on these platforms, that's fine, fantastic. But the first three things we're gonna talk about and, and the best three things we're gonna talk about here is one, we're gonna talk about local lawyers. So how to find local lawyers in your area that can get your trademark for you. So if you wanna outsource this, fantastic. You can find someone local, support your local community, whatever it may be, and get to talk to people in real time, maybe in person on the phone. And sometimes that just feels better, right? Because you learn a lot about the process and everything like that. So sometimes we're doing this the first time and you want to learn about it, this might be the best option for you. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And then next, online services. So there's so many options when it comes to online services. So we get Trademark, yeah, Upwork, Fiverr. I'm going to show you all these things and I'm going to show you many more as well and talk about the pros and cons to a lot of these things. Again, to outsource these things and show you kind of if, if you want to outsource i'm going to show you the cheapest and easiest way to do that to make sure again you're protecting your your wallet protecting your your budget right we don't we don't want to overspend when it comes to this. We want to run lean when it comes to our business, especially if we're just starting out. And three, I'm going to teach you how to do it yourself with no lawyer at all. So this obviously is the cheapest option if we don't get a lawyer involved, which makes sense, right? So I'll walk you through this step by step here, guys, making sure you know exactly how to do this, how to check your trademark name, how to make sure it's in the right class, uh, and exactly how to fill out the forms and everything like that when it comes to filling out a trademark and filing a trademark on your own without a lawyer. Okay, so let's talk about local lawyers now. So first thing here is it's literally just type in local trademark attorney. You can also type in local IP attorney, everything like that. And you can go through here and you can see, you'll probably see some ads. Uh, these are a lot of the online services that uh, we're going to go through later. But you can see, you know, I'm in the Memphis area right now. We can see there's tons of local lawyers, patent and trademarks. Yeah, I can see one right here, see one right here. And I can, I could probably find a, t a ton more here, these little, little red dots. And I'm sure if you're in a bigger city, you can find even more and more. So if you're, you're looking for a local guy, I would just go through a website for a website, see if you can find prices, see if you can find if they i'd rather have a lawyer who just focuses on patent and trademarks do this kind of stuff than someone who focuses on litigation and just trademarks on the side right but again you know trademarks aren't the most complicated thing so it's not a, a huge issue most lawyers probably could do this very very simply if simply is even a word but otherwise guys you know what i'm saying here so just call some people up talk to them, uh, contact them through the forms. I would go through a lot of people, just talking to a lot of people, trying to find out the prices, the names, the, the reputations, uh, what their process looks like, everything like that before I make my decision. But that's literally what I would do there. As I'd go through all the local, I'd be a little bit of a review snob and go through these reviews here and, and see what these people are saying, making sure they're doing the same services that I'm looking for. So that's how that works, guys. Next, I wanna talk about all the online services. Again, we're on Google here. So trademark online services. So I just Type that in. There's tons of things we can type here. We see with ads, we have trademarkengine.com. Uh, we have Brand Shield. We have LegalZoom. We have a whole list here of all these different places that we can go online and get trademarks for our brand name. So we have plenty of options here. So we're on step two here for going back to online services. So these go through here all you want look through it if maybe you've heard about it word of mouth some online services you can use go through here compare prices but i'm going to go through the three that i've used that i know and everything like that so the first one the first one i ever used was trademarkia.com okay so what i thought about this one it was a little expensive the process kind of sucked there's a lot of friction here they weren't very helpful you can't really talk to anybody 
I didn't really like it. It did get the job done and it did take a year and a half to get that trademark. Again, I did make some mistakes on my own there when it came to that, which hopefully I can show you how to avoid those. And sometimes trademarks take a long time, but the cool thing, if you're doing Amazon, things like that, uh, in the US, you just need the pending trademark number. So you don't even have to wait that year and a half to get brand registered. And then obviously if you're protecting yourself in the retail space, whatever it may be, you're gonna start this process anyway. So might as well just get it over with. But trademark is one that, they did get the job done. I've used them personally, so that's why I'm bringing them up. But I wouldn't recommend it again personally. But if you're on the fence, maybe you know going. They're probably the biggest trademark company out there. So again, if you want to go through the big people, people you know you heard a lot about, maybe this is a good option for you. Next, I'm going to talk about Upwork. So I've gone through Upwork. If you don't know what this is, it's a platform where you can list jobs. People can apply for it. There's people from engineers to coders to designers to lawyers on this platform where you can list a job and they can apply. And you can actually talk to people too. So you can invite them to your job here invite them to your job and you can message back and forth get to know them get to talk to them see what their reviews are everything like that so i've typed in trademark lawyers here you can toggle on this us only which i would probably do potentially here if you're getting a trademark in the us this would also work for any other country right you can just go type in your country uh everything like that but you can go down and you can see a lot of people 25 an hour 25 an hour 70 750 an hour so obviously don't do those people right here but there are people that are just getting their profile built up on Upwork. So they're gonna charge a lower rate to get their first jobs, to get their first reviews. And again, trademarks are pretty black and white. There's nothing crazy here. That's not like they're going to litigation for you, getting you a, a certain amount in returns, anything like that. No, they're just filing with the government office for you on your behalf. So trademark specialists, 75 an hour, everything like that. So go through, see how many hours it would take them, which shouldn't take more than an hour. But anyways, this is a good one. If you want to talk to your trademark lawyers, you want to search through a lot of people, invite people to your job, I recommend Upwork. Next is Fiverr. So if we type in here, trademark registration, and this one is kind of the one that's kind of blowing up when it comes to trademark registration. And if you want to outsource, again, I'm going to show you how to do this on your own here in a second. But this is the last thing I want to talk about before we do that. And so we type in trademark registration on Fiverr. This one is you can just see little jobs here. So starting at $30, $30, $40 here. I like to go to sort by best selling because if people are buying the most of these, then it's probably doing an okay job. So we see five star reviews, 124. I'll do a trademark registration in the US or other $30 here. $40 here. So this is, seems almost too good to be true. So go through here, make sure you read the reviews, make sure you talk to them. Uh, Fiverr is cool because you, you probably could get your money back if something does go wrong. Same thing with Upwork, everything like that. So they have some protections in place here. But if I was going to outsource it today, what I would use is Fiverr because it's the cheapest one by far. Instead of, I paid like a thousand to $1,200 my first trademark. That's ridiculous, okay? So this process is getting more popular and popular. People know that it's actually a really easy thing to do. And we see this with fiverr.com here. So this is what I recommend guys, if you are outsourcing it and don't wanna do it yourself. Next, let's talk about the nitty gritty, the fun stuff. So no lawyers, no nothing. We're gonna do this on our own. So we go up here, I'm at the USPTO.gov site. And what this stands for is United States Patent and Trademark Office. So this is where your lawyer would file this for you anyway. So we're just going straight to the source. So I'm gonna walk you through this step-by-step step here. And I wanna tell you, everything that's important here. So the first thing we're looking at is trademarks, okay? And there's two things we need to worry about. So the searching trademarks tab and apply online. So first I wanna talk about checking to make sure your brand name is eligible, okay? Just co covering this really quickly here. I wanna make sure that our brand name is allowed to do this. So if we go to the trademark electronic search system, the test system or whatever it may be, you can actually search if your trademark is already existing out there. So we don't wanna file a trademark that already exists out there because we'll get declined. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. They'll ask for like these letters that keep sending back and forth. It just costs more money, more time. So we wanna make sure that we're in the clear when it comes to our trademark name. So let's search our name here. So for today, Today's example, I'm going to do a brand name called Vegan Bulk. Okay, so it's a vegan protein supplement company, everything like that. So this is what I'm looking for. So you can go live and dead. I like to look at live and dead, but some people just like to look at live. So these are live trademarks and we see dead trademarks. For some reason, I like to look at the dead ones because it just shows the history of, of companies trying the same thing. But again, live will get you there a little quicker probably. But let's hit submit query. So if you see this, this is a great sign. So no test records were found to match the criteria of your query. So this means that they didn't find anything. I'm also gonna pick a space here to see if there's one that possibly shows up there too. And we see no results. So that's fantastic. That's a great thing. So if we just you know type in say Nike here, obviously this is gonna work and we're gonna see so many live trademarks when it comes to Nike. And you're like, Cameron, why do they have multiple trademarks? Well, it's because they can have different classes, which we're gonna talk about here in a second. So whether that's downloadable virtual goods here, or it's virtual goods, again, entertainment services, 
or if it's their actual shoes or shirts or whatever it may be, which I'm sure if we kept digging, we would find. So next guys, we checked our trademark name out. Now it's time to apply online. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through this step by step here, making sure you know exactly what to do, what forms that are very important, everything like that. So if we go log in to the page right here, we see set up your USPTO.gov account. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna set up, it's very quick, set up your information and get your .gov account set up right here. I already have mine set up, but this will take you about 10 seconds to do. So I'm gonna log in with my other USPTO.gov site. So once you're logged in, you're gonna see a place like this, okay? So just your homepage once you're all signed up and we're gonna to go to file applications. That's the next step in this process, file a TAS application. Okay. So next page is going to ask for your account ID verification. Now there's a lot of things here that you're, I, I'm going to suggest you read, but I'm going to go over the important stuff as well. So you can just skip through it a little faster, but just go through it once, just kind of read through things. But so they're going to ask for verification, uh, your social security number, your photo ID and wallet, access to credit profile, everything like that. But they tell you who they want that for. So you must verify your identity if you're a trademark attorney. I am not, uh, including in-house counsel, Canadian trademark attorney. I am not a trademark owner. Technically I am, but in this circumstance of this example, I, I am not as well. So I'm doing my first trademark ever. So I am not a trademark owner. Okay. So you must be a sponsored by a verified attorney. If you're a paralegal support staff for attorney, all that good stuff here, which just falls into the, the attorney part of it again. So I am not going to do this, but as soon as I get my trademark and become a trademark owner, I would do this next time just to keep things kosher. Again, they're only doing this to make sure they're, they're combating fraud. Okay. So this only helps you, right? It's Cause someone, someone gets on here and tries to mess with your trademark, whatever it may be, they're going to want these, the certain ID verification, everything like that. If you're hooked up to it, then obviously they're not going to have your, your social security number and your ID, hopefully anyways. So we're going to go over here and hit skip for now and continue to forms. So we see this will be the most ugly form you'll ever see and ever sign up for, but don't be alarmed. We're going to go through this step by step here. So the first thing we're going to do, so obviously I'm going to encourage you to read through this your first time, but I'm going to, again, just skip through the parts that are important and make sure I bring up anything that I think is, is really relative. But again, we're filling this out and if it doesn't go well, if we do it incorrectly or miss a step here or there, this could be a, a, a bad time. You're just going to have a bad time. Let's just put it that way. Okay. It's going to be a year, maybe a year and a half. You're going to have to do all these crazy things to kind of get it back and running, or it's just going to fail in general. Okay. So the first thing we're going to see here is please select one of the filing options below. So we have the TAS plus and the TAS standard. So the first thing you're probably going to notice here is the difference in the fees. So for the plus it's 250 per class. The next one is 350 per class. So the difference here that you just need to know about is essentially if you do the plus, you're literally just doing a class. So a field, just like I showed you on Nike, where they had the virtual goods thing, we're going to pick a class that already exists. So that way it's really easy for the trademark office. It's just, it goes hand in hand with classes they already have set up. Where the TS standard comes in is we don't know our class number. We don't know what's going on. So they're gonna charge you an extra hundred bucks because there has more work on their side, essentially. So we're gonna do the TAS plus, okay? And I'm gonna show you exactly how to go find your code here. So let's hit this TAS plus requirements right here. And we can see, you know, when to use the TAS plus filing, which again, you can read for days and days all about the stuff if you're interested. You're kind of a nerd like me. You're probably gonna read through a lot of this stuff. But anyways, I'm just gonna show you where to go here. So what this means is if we can use the plus, provide all required information when you submit the application, which I'm gonna show you how to do, and then select entries of good of services only from the trademark ID manual. This is what I'm talking about where the classes already exist. So let's click on this and I'll show you how to search this database. So we click this and then we go down to ID manual. And here is where we can start to search for any products out there and get codes back. So we're doing a vegan protein, right? So we do vegan protein, you can spell it supplement. And we see that two terms and two things pop up here. So we see one vegan protein for use as a nutritional supplement and ready to drink beverages. So this wouldn't be it, right? I'm doing a powder. I'm not doing like a slim quick or whatever it may be called. That's already ready to drink. I'm doing a vegan liquids protein supplement. So the second one, it says vegan liquid protein supplements. The liquid kind of confuses me, but I'd say I'm more in this category than I am ready to drink beverages. Okay. So this is the one I'm going to be using uh, to go through here. Again, you can keep searching. You can mess around with keywords a little bit more, get more options potentially, right? If I took away vegan and did protein supplement, like, holy cow, there's going to be a ton of options here. Okay. So, you know, I can even put in protein supplement shakes, but I'm going to go the vegan route because I think that identifies a little bit better. And they can see here, so you got whey, soy, vegan. And so we're going to make sure that we fit as best as possible here. So going back here, I have that thing ready to go. And I'm going to go back to the form here. So we're going 
going to use the plus. So for 250 per class. And again, the class is just one of these guys. So we found the class for us already. If you want to do multiple classes, it's just going to cost you an extra. So it's almost like getting multiple trademarks for different classes, everything like that. So you have to weigh that. I say just start with one. If you expand out, get another one later, or just start a new brand name in general for that, that certain class, right? If you want to separate it out a little bit more. So this is what we're going to be doing here. Next is an attorney filing the application. No we are not. Next, the third one here, optional to upload a previously saved form file, first review the USPTO, blah, 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 blah. So essentially, if you had a file that you were doing already and you're continuing it, you would upload it here, but we do not have that. So we're going to hit continue. So next, guys, we're on this page. We see the next thing, owner of Mark. So if an individual used the following format, last name, first name, uh, middle initial, all that good stuff. If you have a company name, this is where you're going to put that. So I'm going to use Cameron James LLC for this example uh, in doing business as vegan bulk but again you know if i was starting over i would just file the trademark right away using my regular name i would be okay with that but since i have a company already set up i'm just going to use that to keep everything in line so next we're going to entity type here so i'm not an individual right so i used a limited liability company but again just select the right one for you so after you select that right one, it may pop up another thing here. So it's asking me where my LLC is everything. So I'm going to put this in here and make sure that, you know, it lines up with the state I'm in. Uh, if you're a non-US company, it's going to ask for your country right there. Going down just the star asterisk. So the mailing address, one thing you need to know about here, and I'm not typing this in right now, just because I'm going to type it in later that way. You know, I'm not going to show you my addresses here just to protect my identity, of course, here. But one thing you need to know here, entered addresses is publicly viewable in the USPTO office. So if you have an address here that you don't want to share, make sure you go get a PO box or a suite number or something like that where you can put this because this will be publicly viewable for others to see on your trademark name in the USPTO where we searched like for Nike and everything earlier it will be viewable right there so make sure you get a PO box if you're not comfortable with giving that address publicly okay so you don't probably want this as your home address because people are going to see this and they can come to your home and everything like that just want to avoid this if we can go get a PO box number get that taken care of so after you fill in the mailing address, you're gonna put your city, state, uh, country right here, zip code, and next you'll do the email address and make sure that's a good one where you're gonna receive everything back to you. So double check the email address, guys, make sure that one's 100% correct. We don't wanna make a mistake there. And then if we have another owner of the business, so say someone else owns the business, you can add multiple owners right here. So after we fill out all that information, we're gonna hit continue right down here. So next, guys, I just got a little bit of warning just to make sure that if you get the same thing, you know what to do here. It's saying a telephone number has been entered. Although optional telephone number would help the examining attorney contact you if additional information is needed. Please keep in mind the information you submit to the USPTO will be available to the public. So I would probably just put in a Google voice number here if you're possible. I'm not going to put in my public number because again, I don't want that to be displayed. But if you would like to get another Google voice number, which is super easy, download the app. I put that up to your Gmail account and then you can get that one for free. And then obviously you can get incoming calls from there. So that's what I do there. Now we're going to hit continue. So onto the next page here, guys. So this one's actually a really important one. So uh, please pay attention here. So we're going to talk about the difference between standard characters and special forms. So essentially what it's saying is it wants us to select what kind of trademark we're doing. Are we doing standard characters? Or are we doing a special form? So the, you know, just to break this down for you really quickly, the difference here is standard characters are just letters. So if I type in vegan bulk uh, in a web browser, things like that, it's just the text. So I'm trademarking vegan bulk as text. Okay. Special form is a logo. So say I got a vegan bulk logo done, which you can do on Fiverr, Upwork, which I suggest doing if you're making your own brand, you can actually trademark that style, that logo, that design, and get that done as well, okay? So most of the time, I just do standard characters here. We see this keeps switching back and forth uh, when the form here, but I do standard characters because I usually don't have a logo I'm super proud about at the beginning when I'm testing a product or a brand. If it's something where I put a lot of time into it up front, I'm going to go ahead and use special form here and upload the file with my logo on it and get that taken care of. Now, this doesn't matter if you're doing Amazon or whatever. Maybe it doesn't matter on this side because it's going to ask you which kind of trademark you got and it works both ways. But again, if I have a brand that I'm proud about and a logo that I'm really proud about, I'm going to do special form here and actually get legal protection because this is what this is about to get legal protection for that. But in this case, I'm just doing standard characters and I'm going to put it in vegan bulk right here. Okay. So we can see here just to read some more notes here. The entry could be in capital letters, lowercase letters, combination thereof, 
do not, you probably can't see this, let me zoom in, do not include the TM, SM, or R, anything like that. So they're not actually part of the logo here. And you can actually see them preview, which doesn't really matter here for when it comes to the text. And going down to the next section here before we continue, uh, we also see this additional statement section. So this is important, especially if we have things that are in the gray area, say vegan bulk was already taken a different class, uh, maybe there's different translations. So we see here, if you want to, you know, claim of a prior registration, so go through a later registration, which I don't totally understand. I'm going to avoid those circumstances to get I'm not a lawyer. If we want to harbor in on translations where the transliteration here, consent of individual identified and mark, concurrent use of claim. So this is more of like, if I had things that I really wanted to take care of here, I would have a lawyer do this, okay? And that way he can take care of this uh, in full. I'm gonna ignore this part again, because we did our research. Vegan bulk is not taking. We got we got blanks every time we looked it up. Uh, also just a note here for special form, you can also trademark your colors so you can list out, you know, the you know maybe your logo's red, maybe it's black, maybe it's gold and yellow, whatever it may be. You can actually identify them there. If it's just a black logo, then you leave it blank. So just be aware of that. But anyways, guys, that's how you do that. Next, we're gonna hit continue. So this next page, guys, this is where we're doing the classes. So remember, we looked up that ID earlier. So this is where we're going to add this in here. So we're going to go to add goods and services. And we go back up here, just like I did earlier. So vegan protein supplement, hit go. Then we can see right down here, we get the vegan liquid protein supplements. And now I'm going to use this insert check entries. Again, if we select multiple of these, it's just going to be an extra 250 each time. So be aware of that. Make sure you just pick the best one for you. If you have multiple fields you're going into, obviously take care of that. You'll know in your specific situation. But for me, it's just this one field and we're going to save as much money as possible. So after you guys double check that, make sure you guys are in the good there. It's next going to ask you, what's going on with your current brand name. So section 1A here. So are you actually using this mark in commerce now? So say you're selling on Amazon or in retail or Shopify already, you're gonna hit section 1A. Next, no use of mark yet intending to use. So you're just getting ready, you're getting prepared, you're getting brand registered on Amazon or you're about to sell this thing, you'll be section 1B. Uh, these are for foreign applicants. So if you're outside the country, make sure you take care of this and use these as well. All right, so I know a lot of people will be, so this will pertain to quite a few people. Foreign application exists for same goods and services. Foreign registration exists for same goods and services. So I'm not sure what the difference here is. I always just click this 44D one, but again, you can double check and you can actually go in here and read more about it. But for us, it's no use of mark yet, and we're gonna do 1B. So it's gonna let you go ahead and select the foreign registration here if you are foreign and uh, you click 1A and 1B still. So you can stack these a little bit, but I'm just 1B here. And then it's gonna ask you to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing, that you got this exactly right, and you're gonna double check. So read through this, guys. Make sure you're, you're going through this very slowly. If you gotta rewatch this again, that's totally fine here again, because the next page is about the money, so the, the cost here, so there's no turning back. And so make sure you guys are all good, comfortable there. So I'm gonna go into the next page now. So next page here, guys, uh, check here to appoint a U.S. licensed attorney. Obviously, we don't need this. And uh, docket reference number, we don't need this as well. I uh, have your email address right here that will be blurred out on my side, but uh, make sure that's, you know, double check, that's okay. And then you can also add another email address here just to be really safe if you'd like to. Next, we're gonna hit continue. Uh, next, guys, this is the fun part. So it's gonna ask for the money right here and have everything signed. So we see signature information signed directly, email, text, form to second party for signature or handwritten pen and ink signature. I'm just gonna sign directly so we don't have to wait because this will take longer and you'll have to go through more hoops like send this in or fax it in or mail it in. I don't wanna do that. I wanna do this all online here because it is the 21st century. Uh, so we're gonna go down here and it's gonna make you acknowledge all these things. So make sure you read through this, just making sure that everything is correct, making sure you did everything to the best of your ability, making sure you knew everything that you were doing here. So read through this, guys, make sure it's all set there and go ahead and confirm. Uh, next, you're going to just do your signature here. So you can just put your name and then uh, signature's name here. So type that out. It's going to be the same here. And then your position, right? So for me, it's an owner. And then you put date signed right here. So for me, it'd be Cameron James. And then, you know, Cameron James right here again. And then I put the date and then I would go ahead and validate. And then after that, it's gonna ask for money. So you're gonna pull your credit card out, go through that. So guys, that is how you do that. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Hopefully you have a better understanding of you know, how to get a trademark, the cheapest and best ways to do this, how to do it on your own if you'd like to without a lawyer. Hopefully the step-by-step -step process made it that much more simple. Again, this isn't a really that hard of a process. Yes, it isn't perfect. It isn't the easiest. It isn't straightforward. The forms on the USPTO office are not very good, 
But again, we can do this ourselves. So make sure you go back and rewatch it if you have to. Let me know if you got any questions in the comments about how this process went for you. Otherwise, guys, if you want more updates on this stuff, more updates on private label, how to do things faster, easier, e-commerce wise, whatever it may be, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below to stay up to date and get all my latest videos and updates when they come out. Otherwise, guys, I hope you have a great day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.